you know, such a beautiful day today uh, to race, man. It was really, really nice out. Just uh, one of those beautiful fall mornings. It was cold. When you get up, you needed a coat and everything. But by the time 10 o'clock rolled along, when it was time to leave Northfield, uh, it was quite warm. And it was just a, a just a really, really nice fall day. And um, I wasn't happy with the way it ended up, but certainly happy with the way, um, with the way it started. So... Um, We'll get to the horse in one second. I did want to uh, run through the horses that trained today. Um, I trained uh, vehement in two, three, last half in a minute. He was good, but he still feels like he's he's learning to wear those shoes. Now, he, somebody didn't understand what I meant the other day when I said, you know, we made some wholesale changes and we put aluminums on him up front. And he ended up coming with a lot of weight. So there's quite a change. There's quite a transition. They didn't really understand. So the shoes that he came with were heavy. Not only were they heavy, but he had weights welded into the toe. Uh, some people would do that rather than put toe weights on. Cali Rankin used to do that all the time. Probably one of the sharpest horsemen I, I, I've ever come across. Cali and his family, Donnie, Sonny, Rankin. They're super, super sharp people. I never liked the weight welded in the front of the toe myself. Um, you know, we always opted for toe weights, but I think anyway, we've lost toe weights before too. Nevertheless, when VMA came, I took all the weight off and went to a lighter shoe, which I guess the easiest way to put it is they have to be much more focused and there has to be much more trust in their gait and confidence in their gait. And when there isn't, they can make breaks very, very easily, pace, get out of gear. When I trained him the first day with the lighter shoes on, he was awesome. And then we had to wait a week to qualify him. He was not good in the qualifier. When I trained him today, he was adequate. I'll get him around on Tuesday. But am I confident that this is the final shoeing change on Vehement? I think it's a coin toss at this point. Not positive. But it was still a good mile today. It was a chilly morning when we were training this morning. And I was happy. Captain Incredible trained good. Just trained him a mile and a half. But he did come in the last quarter in 29 and 2 in the jog carts. He was very, very, very good. He's going to qualify uh, Tuesday at the Meadows. Uh, widespread panic. I trained him in 59. I thought, was he better? He was different. He wasn't hanging on the line. He wasn't as hot. He was more behaved. But he was touching a knee a little bit. Much less than he was before. So I guess there was some, some give and some take. The improvement was is that his gait was cleaned up a little bit. I guess the, the, the negative part was he didn't feel as powerful as he's felt in the, in the, in the, in the past. And that may be because he's a little short. It may be because the track could be a million things. Training by himself and Earwood on could be a million things. But at the end of the day, he was okay. So two for two in the okay department. I'm ready to. I trained him in 2.8. He was good, but he left me feeling that 2.8 was not where he was comfortable going. Probably 2.10, 2.11. So we'll back him up to 2.10 next week. This is the time where I'd like to push them a little bit in the race bike and then come off and say, okay, that was a little too much or... That's the boiling point for that horse. We need a little more work into this guy. And that's where I felt I was with I'm Ready too. I was hoping to come to you with a video saying hey, he's ready to qualify. But I think that's a couple, maybe three weeks away still for him. But he was trotting good. Very, very happy with the way he was trotting. And um, Chappie, trained Chappie in 217 today. Now he's in the race bike. But that's because we can wear a gating pole and wear his equipment. And I can set it where I want it. You know, Chappie is... Um, I said to Amy after she watched him go, she goes, wow, he really does look a lot better. And I said, yeah, he is a lot better. But uh, it's going to take time. I said, we forget because we've worked so much on this horse and he's been training so much. He's been in the barn so much. We've talked about him so much that we forget he is a two-year-old. This is the end of his two-year-old season, right? A lot of growing up to do, a lot of maturing to do. But what he does feel like is very powerful. You know, I had to, what I mean by that is I have to hold him together the whole way. I have to coddle him. I know where his weak points are. As he comes out of the turn and he switches his leads, he'll maybe brush himself, touch himself, get out of gear. You really got to anchor him, hold him together, and then ease him out and let him trot. But he did come the last quarter in 34 seconds today, which is good also. I was very, very happy with uh, Chappie today. I said to Amy, you know, I said, you know, in three, four, five months, this horse could be a decent horse. She goes, five months? I said, well, honey, you didn't remember. He's still a baby. He still is going to go through growth spurts and mature and grow up. And that won't even end in his three-year-old season. But it's a confidence, right? 
the confidence. You have to continue to inch. He's a horse. You're not just going to be able to go, go mile and two eight and say, nah, that might have been a little quick. Back him up a little bit. You're not going to get that opportunity. It's going to be baby steps with him all the way down to the races. Then at the races, baby steps with him. He's, he has no confidence in himself or his gait. You know, you know what I, uh, I liken it to? is your kids when you're teaching them how to ride a bike, right? All three of our kids were the same way. You know, you put them on the, the little pedal bike with the wheels, with the training wheels, and they're happy. And then you go to take the wheels off, and they fall down the first time. Like, no, 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 just put the training wheels back on, put the back on, put the back on. I can't do it. I can't ride a bike. And there's a number of ways to approach that, right? I don't know the, the, the direction. I took where it falls in the spectrum of things. I suspect closer to how dads would deal with this. I remember uh, Ollie for sure. Abe, I think I took her over to the to the school and let her go around the go around the 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 track over there at the at the high school, the track and field track, and. Um, you know, she, she got it quickly. Ollie was stubborn. He didn't want to do it. He couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. Finally, uh, I just took the wheels off, put them on the bike, and said, listen, this is how we're going to do it. I'm going to hold you. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna go down the street. we got your helmet on. Uh, we're going to go down the street. There's no one on the street. There's no cars on the street. And we're just going to take it easy. We picked up speed, and I just said, away you go. And that was that. <laughs> And he got the confidence. You know, he wobbled and wobbled and wobbled. And then he got down to the street and he fell over because he didn't know how to brake and turn. And then we worked on it from there. And within a couple of days, he was riding his bike, right? Much like swimming. I learned to swim probably how many of people same age as me that had older siblings learned how to swim. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Time to learn. In you go. And that was that. Right? A little... A little uh, little feast or famine, uh, sink or swim, literally sink or swim. And and with horses, you know, with a lot of these babies like Chap, just baby steps, baby steps, baby steps. And then when you start to feel their confidence growing, at that point, then the training wheels come off. Now, that may be in training. That actually may be after a few starts. It may take some time to do that. And some of them just kind of shake it off and away they go. And I can't really tell you which one Chap is going to be. He's getting there telling you right now, he's going to get there. He likes to trot, and he is good at it. His horse doesn't really wear a boot at all. He wears a little bit of back wrap behind. That's it. No boots. Doesn't hit anywhere. He's getting better and better and better, and he's strong. And as he gains strength, and his his joints start to cool down, and his body starts to you know mature, I don't know what kind of horse he's going to be, but he's going to be a racehorse. And I was really, really happy with, um, <laughs> I was really happy with him today. I remembered, I couldn't remember, I kept trying to think of Ava. And I do remember we were away on vacation one time. And this is exactly what I was talking about. This would have been a great story three minutes ago. We were away on vacation. She was just a kid. She might have been three, four, maybe five. Um, and, um, I remember there was this, uh, we were at a water park, I don't know, Jamaica or somewhere, I'm not sure. We were at a water park and, and they walk up, I see them walk up the water park and I'm sitting in a, you know, laying in bed there and I see them walk back down. I said, what's going on? Amy goes, oh, she won't go on the slide. She's scared. I said, oh, that's fine, honey. Here, I'll help you. She goes, no, 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 I, I don't want to go. I said, it's fine. I said, we'll just watch a couple of kids go down. Everything will be great. Walk up into the slide and said, okay, it's important. I want you just to look over the slide, make sure everything's all right. She walks up, she looks. I look at the guard, the guard starts to laugh. I said, way you go. And I just shoved her onto the slide and down she went. And uh, and there was a mom there. One mom was horrified. Her mouth was open and the other mom's laughing and she goes, it's really a dad thing. <laughs> and that was that. And Ava will get down to the bottom and never stop going up and down the slides all day maybe for the entire rest of the trip so it, it but they are kids right the, the horses are kids and when they have low confidence when they're not sure of themselves you know this is this is what happens and you just have to help them shake it off so uh really happy with the way the horses trained today as i said captain chappie i'm ready to panic vehement all trained 
good. Uh, your buckets, uh, I have them kind of completed. I'm going to uh, have Eric post them maybe on Sunday. Everybody get a, just an early day, a head start on the buckets for, uh, for the coming week in Harrisburg. Now, no, uh, now would be the time for people to speak up and say, well, this is what I'd like to see. I believe what people want to see is specific buckets. Now, I do want to have a Pennsylvania trotting filly and a Pennsylvania trotting colt bucket, right? That would likely, in my mind, in my head, that's two horses. Not three, two. If we got three in there, it would be unlikely, but cool. I think it would be around sixty, sixty-five thousand dollars 65000 Does that sound right to you? High-end pacer, high-end trotter will be on there. I will put uh, um, an Ontario bred pacing colt very specific on there because we are looking for one. If we do buy one, it'll be of a, a better variety, right? So I'm going to put that on there specific. Is that something that makes sense to everybody out there? And then have just one general bucket, maybe sixty-five thousand. What what I what would likely be made up of uh, like flyers, right? Like horses that, uh, geez, I think that that's a really good buy for eighteen or twenty thousand dollars. Put that one in the bucket. And if that doesn't fill, if these don't fill, I I can't because I'm still scraping together money for the Lexington to pay Lexington. So there's no extra. The coverage bear when we head to Harrisburg, and I want everybody to know that. So. If you're saying to yourself, ah, I'm going to wait and see what Anthony buys, you're going to be very, very disappointed because I am going to get down there. I do have a specific plan, Pennsylvania Trotting Colts, Pennsylvania Trotting Phillies, a pacer, a trotter, an Ontario bred pacer, because that's what we need, and then just a general bucket. That's what I thought made the most sense. And now would be the time for you to speak up. It is Thursday. I plan on posting these on Sunday. So please, if you, are, if you think we could go a different way or maybe... Um, would like something different, then please open your mouth because once it's done, it's done. And they're going to be up uh, hopefully on Sunday. Obviously, I'm off to the Breeders' Crown tomorrow. I thought it was pretty cool. I posted on Facebook. I don't know how many times in, in, our, in this industry where you've had three brothers line up on the gate beside each other. Three brothers in the same Breeders' Crown race. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, maybe they're one of the Houghtons or something. I have no idea. Maybe there was, but uh, it doesn't happen very often. And it's not only is it a, a pretty cool and special time and race for us, for the stable, for for Memento Mori, our group, but it's also pretty cool for my family too. It never really dawned on me till last night that that was the case. So that's happening tomorrow afternoon. Saturday night will be time is on my side. Somebody said, where's Tactical Mound? She got a buy. The, the Phillies only didn't have any divisions or eliminations. They only had a final. So she's going right to the final. So hopefully next Saturday, next Friday, Saturday, we'll have three horses in the Breeders' Crown Finals. Now we do have, if you got, again, I'm telling you right now, it's going to be first come, first serve. We have 12 seats in the restaurant. And I think we have a suite on the Saturday night Breeders' Crown Final. You're going to have to speak up, and it is going to be first come, first serve, and time stamped, because we don't have 13, we have 12, and um, I, I just want everybody to know that, so, because I know that uh, there's not a ton of them sold yet, I think, I assume everybody's waiting to see if we make the final. Tactical Mounds is in the final. It is the Breeders' Crown. So even for our clients in New Jersey, if you're planning on going out to the Meadowlands for the Breeders' Crown final, we have 12 seats on the Friday, I think, and a suite on the Saturday, if I'm not mistaken, or vice versa, but I think that's the way it is. So, um, that's what took place this morning. I forgot yesterday, um, uh, greatest ending qualified, 55, last quarter 28, looked good. Stacy and Brett were happy with him, so that is good. Um, and Hallie in the Clouds, she didn't qualify that great, uh, running in a little bit, out of gear, not, not really out of gear, but... I had trained her 2-2 the week before, so I'm a little surprised it was 2-4, but, you know, Jason was probably just trying to get her around. My concern is her right knee does bother her. She it does start off a little bit stiff. Um, so is that maintenance-wise, or is that something a little more sinister? Um, I'll have Dr. Latessa look into that. Uh, I'll have him look into that tomorrow, tomorrow morning. He was away today. Now, for the racing today. 
We're going to start off with uh, insider trading. I was very angry at this Philly day. The first time in my life where I can actually say, yeah, I, I just was not impressed with her overall output and her attitude in the race. I didn't want to get away ninth. I had an opportunity to float towards the front going into the first turn. Would there be a five hole? Would there be a six hole? Or maybe I just sit out behind uh, behind Sean. Just just ride. And that's what I did. I sat out there. I went to move her down the back stretch. She made a break, get out of gear. Then kind of threw herself for a step, come up trotting. She probably touched herself and made a break. But you know what? I, I just don't I don't like the way she did it. And I don't like her approach to her work right now. She is going back to Ohio. Now, I had said to, uh, in our group chat with the, with the Philly, she's going back. She's going in the condition claimer. We're going to change her shoes around. She's going to race at Northfield for the time being. And my partner, Joseph, well, well I thought we were going to sell her as a broodmare. Why is she in a claimer? It's a 30 claimer. Her, her tag is $52,000. I think we're okay. I don't, I don't foresee, expect, or care if somebody claimed her for that amount, to be honest. So, um, insider trading is heading back to Ohio. I haven't told Jason yet that uh, I'm fancy like he's heading back to Ohio also. So he likes fancy, but he's frustrated all the same as I am because there's no classes there for him. So maybe what I'll do is I'll call the race secretary and see if there's something for her, an optional Phillies and Mares claimer or something where she's competitive. Because I think she is a nice filly, and, and it's frustrating to me that, you know, last night jumped over a pylon and she running in and hitting her knee. She wasn't doing that stuff in Ohio, and, and uh, we do have shadows in Ohio and pylons, and, and her knees were on in Ohio. So I assume it's the surface uh, that she doesn't like at Yonkers or whatever it is. Um, you know, we're going to try and get her back on the straight and narrow uh, here in Ohio at Northfield Park or Scioto or the Meadows. Surely to God, somewhere has a place for, somewhere in Ohio has a place for an Ohio bred pacing filly, you know, that, that's decently talented. She's not an open pacer, she's a good filly, and um, I, I'd, I'd hope that there's a place for her. Uh, next was Drebin. Drebin was flat. You know, here's the thing, uh, that would be the, the word of the day, it would be flat. Drebin was flat, Ronnie Wren's race bike wheel in that race was flat. I felt bad that they set back Wilbur. I never feel anybody should be set back um, for causing a flat tire. Flat tires happen. And uh, what had happened was Wilbur left quick with a long shot and then slammed the air on. He didn't need to do that. No one is sitting behind you. You're, you're, you're a long shot. Just let the race progress. Go. I don't know what the first quarter was. Let's say it was 27 and 4 or 28. Just aim to go half and like 57 and 3, 57 and 4. And you can be sure at some point between top of the stretch coming to the half and the wire, one of the three horses behind you that are favorites are coming. You're not going to be left on the front end. And what had happened was Wilbur jammed on the air right away. Jebin ran up on top of Ronnie and kind of sashayed to the right and clipped Ronnie's wheel and flattened his tire. It's not Jebin's first wheel. He wasn't too concerned about it. He never even, never even twitched his ears. He's probably just so happy to not hit his knee in that stride that, that he was happy. He touches his knees, and we're, we're trying to get him out of them slowly. Overall, he was flat today. He was not good. You know, this is the third time he's been first first over, but I didn't really ask him until halfway down the backstretch. We're not going that much. Halfway down the backstretch, Dave starts to scoot away, and I'm like, hey, hey, come on, come on. I hit him a swat, and he just, no response. Scoped good, no blood, no mucus. Not generally a horse that ties up, but I said to Tim, something's going on. And actually, every single horse we raced today was flat. Tenacious Hanover, in an absolute perfect spot. Perfect spot. His left hind bothers him a little bit. His feet bother him a little bit. He's got a few little things going on, but man, he should have finished off his, should have finished off his dinner there. He's only beat a length, maybe, if that. I thought it would maybe length and a half at the very most, but he raced okay. He just is supposed to be in the winner's circle. And I told all my partners, it's not going to happen overnight. Sometimes the horses come forward right away. Sometimes it takes a little bit. Sometimes they don't at all. I do believe Tenacious Hanover is going to be a nice number. It's two, three, four, five, six, seven horse for us. But he's just a little flat right now. And then we get to Series Dragon. I don't know what was going on with this horse. When he first came over here from Harry's, stir him up leaving, he was up there 26 in a piece. No problem. 
I had to really get into him today to get him out of there 27 in a piece. Let Hunter go. Usually he's climbing up on top of the horse in front of him wanting to race. Flat as a pancake today. No life. Sitting in the tool. I knew as they said go. I knew I would make front. I knew Hunter was going to end up on the front and I was going to end up in the tool. And I just thought somewhere between halfway to the first turn and the wire finishing the race, he would come to life. He just didn't. He was a, a beaten third. And you can say, well, they went 52 and 4. I don't care if he went 49 and 4 or 53 and 4. He was flat. So he hasn't been back to Tim's very long. You know, maybe he got a little sick or something. Every single horse, remember, every horse we raced today was flat. I can't say about insider trading because I didn't get a chance to see if she was flat. She made a break. But I can tell you, Dreb and Tenacious Hanover and Sirius Dragon, all three were flat today. So maybe a little under the weather. Who knows what it was? Who knows what it was? But they just weren't good. And like I tell everybody, they can't be good all the time. The only frustrating part was that I was sixth placed fifth in Drebin's race. Halfway down the lane, I'm like, one, two, three, four, five. All right, fine. I'm sixth. At least I fit the class again by 200. Wait, sixth place fifth. You're now out of the class. So I think we'll probably give them next week off uh, unless they need a horse to fill that class and they're going to open it and let him in coming off a sixth place finish. I suspect that might be the case, but he won't be entered first and foremost. He'll be available if needed and requested for that particular event. Otherwise, uh, I suspect he'll probably need a week off. Now tonight we have two more. We have uh, Save America racing in about 30, 40 minutes, something like that. And we have Admiral Dio racing at Mohawk. So good luck to James and all my partners, Admiral Dio. Uh, Brett and all my partners with Save America. Not a great day at the track. The weather is great. It was a perfect day. It's the horses were not. So an okay night last night. A flat day today. Hopefully we can pick things up tomorrow. Uh, we have Marching Forth. We have Maury and the Breeders' Crown at 1.53 p.m. Rock Shining Star races tomorrow afternoon. Stay Close races tomorrow afternoon. Spitfire, yes, with hobbles on, races uh, tomorrow evening. Then we get Pickpocket, Brace for Landing, Chime Bell, JK Victory, and Chevrons by Bass. So with that, I'm going to let you go. I hope you guys are having a, uh, a good day. Now, it wasn't a great day at the track, but it could always be worse. Um, I'm sure they'll bounce back next week. But for today, is what it is. I will talk to you all tomorrow, I'm sure. I'm off to New Jersey at 6 o'clock in the morning is my flight. I could have got the 9 o'clock flight, but I wanted to be there a little bit early. Maybe get some breakfast, head over to the track and see how Morty's doing, and go both trips with him uh, tomorrow uh, morning into the afternoon. Into the afternoon. Ugh. Ugh. Not as tired as I am. Nevertheless, I will uh, talk to you all at some point tomorrow. Have a great rest of your evening. Take care.